Welcome to Worship at St. Andrew. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're so pleased that you take time out of your week to worship our Lord. Let's start out by confessing our sins and receiving the assurance of forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot, cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your, in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time, uh, we'll have a uh, time for children if you want to gather the children around the screen. I brought a bar of soap. I really like this soap because it doesn't have any scent. It's, uh, and it's got a nice dove on it. I want to talk about Jesus and being clean and unclean. In today's gospel story, Jesus' followers, his disciples, are criticized because they don't do what's called a ritual washing before they eat. Now, it's very good to wash your hands. Please, please, please wash your hands. But back in Jesus' day, they didn't understand about germs and viruses. A lot of people just ended up dying back then. But uh, the Pharisees, and they were the ones who were kind of against Jesus, they would do a ritual washing, which was basically taking a fistful of water, pouring it over their hands. And that supposedly made uh, them holy. And what came into their mouth, they were very careful what they ate. Um, Jesus says, you know, it's not so much what comes into the mouth, it's what comes out of the mouth that makes a person evil. For what, Jesus says what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart, evil intentions, bad intentions, things like murder and slander and, and uh, things like this, uh, stealing. Jesus says it's what comes out that makes a person unclean. So how can we make sure our insides are clean? Well, Jesus does that for us. He forgives our sins if we ask. If we open our hearts to Jesus, he makes us clean inside. We pray with me? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he makes us clean. Thank you that he makes us clean. Help us to open our hearts to him. Help us to open our hearts to him. Amen. Amen. This morning's reading comes from the 56th chapter of Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to join those besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone, they are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, 
explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defiles a person but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she keeps shouting after us he answered i was sent only to the lost sheep of israel but she came and knelt before him saying lord help me he answered it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs she said yes lord Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the men's room at work, the boss placed a sign directly above the sink that said, think. The next day, when he, when it, when he went into the men's room, he saw, he looked at the sign and right below, immediately above the soap dispenser, someone had carefully lettered another sign, thope. <laughs> Well, I talked to the children about soap. And of course, we know how important it is for, for us to wash our hands for 20 seconds. Washing hands with soap is so important. They didn't understand that back in Jesus' day. Not even Jesus. Remember, Jesus was a historical figure. Now, Jesus is still with us, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. And of course, God knows everything, right? But as a historical person, Jesus did not understand uh, the thing about washing hands. So he says, uh, uh, what, you know, washing one's hands does not, uh, or not washing one's hands before eating does not defile. Of course, back then the Pharisees had this ritual. It was a ritual. And they did a lot of rituals to make them clean. One of them was, uh, literally, you had to have a fistful of water to pour it over your hands. Probably really didn't do much to cleanse. And the Jesus' disciples were not doing this, and the Pharisees called them out on that. Said, they're unclean. Why don't your disciples follow the law, the traditions, Jesus? And Jesus talks about, you know what? It's not about what goes in the mouth. It's what comes out out of the mouth that makes one unclean, that defiles a person. And he says, out of the mouth comes the evil intentions of the heart. Murder, theft, fornication, adultery, uh, bearing false witness, um, slander. It's interesting that a lot of Christians who rail against things like fornication uh, fall into the trap of a false witness. There are a lot of people uh, practicing false witness, people who claim to be righteous. We should not do that. Even with our political opponents, we should not practice false, false witness. Jesus did not say that, you know, false witness is not quite as important as fornication. These are bad things, evil things that come out of the heart. Jesus says, it's not what you eat that makes you unclean. 
It's those unclean things inside. Well, we're pretty good folks, aren't we? We're pretty clean. We don't. Well, we might have some hateful, hateful thoughts within. Sometimes they might sneak out the mouth, yes. We need to ask for forgiveness and know that, yes, we are unclean. We need to be made clean. In Isaiah's lesson today, it's a startling thing. It says people that are foreigners, non-Jews, will be accepted if they keep the covenant of Jesus. They will be welcomed in. That was pretty um, startling, okay? Outside, because God wants all people, all people to come to him. And of course, this is what Jesus was about. Now, the second story of clean and unclean, and this is a very uncomfortable one. Jesus goes to Tyre and Sidon. This is where uh, ancient Phoenicia was for you historian buffs. And here's a Canaanite woman, a Gentile. We might say twice unclean, because remember back then, men were considered clean and women were kind of considered unclean. And she was a Gentile, so she was twice unclean. And she shouts after Jesus and her disciples, and his disciples, excuse me, saying, you know, please heal, cast out the demon out of my daughter. And he, he ignores her, seemingly. And the disciples say, send her away. She's yelling after us. And Jesus says a strange thing. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, I wasn't sent to Gentiles. Was he playing a game? Was he, perhaps he was trying to teach something to his disciples? And, uh, and they, they're like, you know, send her away. She kneels down. Lord, help me. And, uh, and then Jesus says another disturbing thing. He says, it's not right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. This is a derogatory thing. I, I don't know why the story of Jesus is still in there. Why, you know, why? It's both in Matthew and Mark. It's not in Luke and not in John. Why they leave that in there? It makes Jesus look really bad. This woman says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus says, woman, great is your faith and your daughter will be healed. Was Jesus using an object lesson to try to show his disciples that, you know what, even those people whom you consider unclean are clean when they accept God, when they, when they practice righteousness, when they allow Jesus in, when they plead to Jesus, when they pray, they are not unclean. We have, in our day and age, we still have this. We have certain people we consider unclean. You know, they're beyond what should be acceptable in God's eyes. We always need to be careful about that. So I said a few weeks ago, uh, and I wish I knew the person who said it, this is when you start drawing lines around who is acceptable in God's sight? Who is who's clean and unclean? You might find Jesus on the outside of the line you've made. God makes people clean, especially when we ask for forgiveness. We need to realize when we start thinking about other people as not being worthy or being unclean that you were unclean, and of course, most Christians were Gentiles, you know, outside the people of Israel, outside God's covenant people. The Apostle Paul says we are covenanted in, we are grafted on, we were unclean, and now we are considered clean. So let's be careful when we start making categories about who is clean and unclean. And let's remember our gracious God who 
wants to reach out to everyone and forgive everyone, wants everyone in the whole world to come into his kingdom. Let's remember that. Let's ask for forgiveness for, of our sins and let's go forth and spread that good news into all the world. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, as Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be made known among the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show 
unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing, especially those we name now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring relief to our world suffering from pandemic. Send healing solutions to those who lead the medical community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant our congregation, St. Andrew, grace to find our life refreshed in you. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Help us to be open to your spirit moving in our call to our new pastor, Jenna Polkowski. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Would you please share a sign of peace with those who are near to you? Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord go before you to show you the way, beside you to be your friend, behind you to encourage you on above you to watch over you, beneath you to uplift you, and within you to give you God's peace. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.